Mario Kart 8 is constantly praised for its amazing graphics, superb track design, and incredibly refined controls. But perhaps the element of the game that impresses me the most is its music. The best soundtrack in any Mario Kart game, bar none, and my personal favorite soundtrack of any video game, this Jazz Fusion Masterpiece is a joy to listen to from end to end. And with the Switch version of the game recently getting its final content update, bringing us the final songs to be added to the game, I thought there's no better time than now to rank every song in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And by that, I do mean every song. Not just the music from all 96 courses, but also the different variations of those songs, as well as all the menu music and staff roles. However, to keep my sanity, I won't be including the front-running variant of all the songs, as well as if there's a variant of a course's music that is very similar to its base version, then I won't be including that as well. So for example, you won't be seeing the On the Moon variant of 3DS Rainbow Road on this list list, as it is very similar to the base music of that track. Keep in mind that this list is comprised entirely of my opinions and is in no way the objective ranking of all the songs, and if you guys have a different ranking, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think of all the great music in this game. This is also by far the biggest project I've done on this channel so far, so if you like it, liking and subscribing would mean a lot. But with all that out of the way, let's roll the intro and get into ranking every song in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And kicking off the list in 132nd place, we have N64, Toad's Turnpike. To be honest, this whole song just kind of sounds blech. There's not really anything going for it. Sure, it works as decent background music for the track, and I suppose it does its job in doing that, but it's just really not there at all. It has an okay organ riff right before the loop, but other than that, there's nothing else I can really say that's good about this song. And since this is last place, I'll establish how this ranking is going to work for all the other songs going forward. I'm going to just talk a little bit about each song, nothing extensive, as we would be here all day if I did, and then I'll play what I feel to be the best portion of the song before moving on to the next one. So here's that organ part. I mentioned before. In 131st place, we have GCN Dry Dry Desert. First off, the entirety of this song just feels kind of samey. There's no real highlight to it, and you could really start playing it at any point, and you could mistake it for the start or the end or literally any other point in the song. There's really just no distinction throughout it. In addition to that, the actual composition of the song kind of sounds like just the most basic desert song that you could come up with. The only reason it's above Toad's Turnpike is that it's got a little bit more going on. However, it's still not really enjoyable to listen to outside of in the context of the game. Now at number 130, we have the online menu theme. This is the first song on the list that I'd say is actually enjoyable to listen to, however, it doesn't really have all that much there. It's very calming and it's the perfect background for spamming I'm using tilt controls, but other than that, there's really not much it has going for it. In 129th place, we have Race Results, Bad. This song, as the name implies, plays when you do poorly in a race. And although it is pretty simple, consisting of mainly just a few low synth notes punctuated by some piano keys, I do appreciate it has a kind of funky vibe to it, and it does have a synth riff towards the end of the loop that I really do enjoy. Now in 128th place, we have Tour London Loop, and originally, I thought this track would place much higher on the list. I mean, on the surface, it sounds pretty good. But when you listen to all the other songs in the game, they're, in my opinion, just better. And this song in particular suffers from a pretty serious problem. It is really forgettable. Seriously, I have never been able to think once of how this song goes without at least hearing some of it first, which is a problem I have not had with any other Mario Kart song, at least to this degree, which is a real shame because the foundations for a good song are here. It has great instrumentation and it has some riffs that I really do enjoy and I think are really catchy. However, with nothing holding it all together, it just leaves no lasting impression. So I really can't justify putting it any higher than this on the list.
Then in 127th place, we have Animal Crossing Results, and I was pretty conflicted on where to put this. On the one hand, this is a beautifully written piano piece, and it is really good in that regard. However, in the context of Mario Kart, it really doesn't fit that well, especially given when it appears in the game. You see, whether you finish in first place or last place on the Animal Crossing track, you will hear this song, and it is frankly incredibly sad, and it can really take away from the hype of just winning first place, just barely, and then you hear this. This would have worked great as an Animal Crossing variation of race results bad. However, the fact that this can just play even if you get first place really does knock it down a few pegs. Not to mention, even though it is really beautiful, I personally just wouldn't really enjoy listening to it outside of the game. I really do prefer faster or more upbeat styles of songs, and that's just a personal preference of mine. However, that definitely also has contributed to it being this low on the list. Then in 126th place, we have a song that probably everyone who's played this game is familiar with. We have the character and cart select theme. It's a pretty short loop with simple instrumentation and not a lot going on, but it is pretty catchy and it makes sense. This is probably the screen you're going to spend the most time on as you'll be trying to figure out your cart combination, your character, as well as what course you're even going to play. In 125th place, we have DS TikTok Clock, and already, even though we're towards the very bottom of the list, these songs are starting to get pretty good, which is a testament to how great the overall soundtrack of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is. The theming was done really well with this one. You can really feel like it's the music that you would hear if you were inside a clock and for some reason music was playing. It's decently catchy as well, however, it can get pretty repetitive over time. Then in 124th place, we have Wii Grumble Volcano. And this is the first of a few songs that weren't updated at all when being ported to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, as if you listen to the original version of the song from Mario Kart Wii, it will sound exactly the same aside from it being slightly more compressed. And while it's not blatantly obvious the entire song is synthesized, it still would have sounded so much better in my opinion had they re-recorded this song and possibly rearranged it with live instruments. This one is similar to TikTok Clock and how it nails the vibe of the track is kind of catchy but can also get pretty repetitive over time. And I'm just going to give this one the slight edge because I feel like it does have a little bit more going on and is a little bit more catchy. In 123rd place, we have Cloudtop Cruise Thundercloud. This one kind of has the opposite problem of TikTok Clock and Grumble Volcano. It has a really catchy tune that I don't think really gets repetitive after a while at all. The problem here is the instrumentation, as it is really basic, with just some bass drums and an electric guitar. This really is just an inferior version of the phenomenal Cloudtop Cruise theme that we'll talk about later. Moving on to 122nd place, we have No Trophy. This plays when you get 4th place or below on a Grand Prix or a set of versus races. This version of the song definitely doesn't sound as sad as it did in previous Mario Kart games, which kind of fits the vibe Mario Kart 8 goes for, as instead of saying, oh well, you lost, it has text that says nice try and the clapping Lakitu, kind of like, you'll get him next time. Its instrumentation also feels overall pretty full, and it also doesn't really get old after a while, so I feel like it definitely deserves to be this high on the list, even though we are still in the very bottom portion of it. Next up is 121st place, Madrid Drive Stadium. And I have to say, this sounds incredibly epic when you hear it in game. As you drive into the stadium, it really makes you feel like you're in a stadium filled with massive crowds of people. However, when you listen to it outside of the game, it kind of just sounds like Madrid Drive was sung by a cult and they decided to remove a few of the 16th notes. The percussion has also been heavily simplified here, which kind of just leaves us with a worse version of a really good tune.
And then in 120th place, we have Madrid Drive Museum. Similar to the stadium version of this song, this simplifies the percussion and removes a few of the notes from the normal version of the song. However, while the stadium version sounds a lot more intense than the normal version of the song, this sounds a lot more muted, having just a heart play with, once again, the simplified percussion, which I feel is a bit nicer to listen to than the chanting that you hear in the stadium. Moving up to number 119, we have the online spectating theme. This is fairly catchy and has a synth bass riff that I really do enjoy. However, it can get pretty old after a while, especially if you join a room during lap one and you have to listen to it for the entirety of a race. In 118th place, we have Results Good, which plays, and you're never gonna guess this, after you do well in a race. I know, crazy, who woulda thunk it? In all seriousness though, although the song is pretty simple, it's also pretty catchy, and not really much more needs to be said. At this point, these songs are already starting to get pretty good, even though we're only at number 117, and Bone Dry Dunes starts to make this apparent. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of how desert music is typically handled in Mario games. However, the combination of guitar, violin, and accordion here sounds really good in my opinion. I will say the song as a whole does sound a little bit flat, however, it definitely has some memorable moments that you can certainly bop your head to. At 116, we have DS Cheap Cheap Beach, and I have to say, this really sounds like an uncompressed version of the original song, except for the fact that it's of course using live instruments and it's not synthesized. Seriously, this sounds super faithful to the original while also giving it a new coat of paint. Does that work if you're talking about audio instead of visuals? Anyway, it sounds good. The steel drums really nail the island vibe of the course. Moving on to 115, we have F-Zero Results. This is of course the results theme for the two F-Zero tracks in the game, Mute City and Big Blue, and it is definitely by far the best results music in the base game. It is a shorter loop, so it definitely still can get repetitive over time, but it has an insanely good bass line, and the main melody of it is just fun to listen to. Moving on to number 114, we have Sky High Sunday, and I have some mixed feelings on this song. I've expressed in the past that I really feel like the main melody of it is extremely flat and feels like it was just made for the Wave 2 trailer. It doesn't really translate that well to being background music for a Mario Kart race. And while I do still stand by those opinions, and that's why it's this low on this list, I cannot deny the bass line on this song is seriously insane, and it's carrying the entire tune. And even though I feel like it doesn't fit the vibe of Mario Kart at all, I will admit this song is pretty catchy. It's definitely grown on me the more I've listened to it. At number 113, we have GBA Boo Lake. The original version of this song back in Super Circuit was honestly pretty simple, but I do think they did a great job of making it more interesting when this course was brought to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in Wave 3 of the Booster Course Pass. The added drums and violins really do spice up the song and make the track feel much more intense when you're driving through it. The foundations of the song, however, in the main melody are still pretty simple, and I can't really justify putting it any higher than this on this list. Then at number 112, we have GCN Baby Park. Now, you could make the argument that this is potentially the most repetitive song in the Mario Kart series, and you very well might be right. 
However, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version of this song is really, really catchy, and the fact that it gets faster with each lap is a cool mechanic. This song has always fit the absolute chaos that is this track, and the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version takes that up to an 11 with tons of brass and electric guitar that really elevates the sense of pure anarchy that is Baby Park. Then at number 111, we have our first song from a battle course, Sweet Sweet Kingdom. And this song basically just shares the same song as Sweet Sweet Canyon with some added sound effects, which normally I wouldn't have included on this list. However, given that it plays in a completely different course than Sweet Sweet Canyon, I've decided to include this as well as other battle tracks that do similar things with other courses. And I'll be honest, this is just a worse version of Sweet Sweet Canyon. All the added sound effects just make it sound too clustered and you can't really even hear the main melody super well. The original version of Sweet Sweet Canyon is really good in my opinion. Meanwhile, this is kind of hard to listen to. It's only up this high because it does still have Sweet Sweet Canyon in it, which is a really good song. But all the new stuff that's been added on really doesn't help it. Then at number 110, we have another song from a battle course, SNES Battle Course 1. In my opinion, this song does a great job of modernizing the original SNES version while also keeping its retro style of sound. It's also really catchy in my opinion, although it can get kind of repetitive over long periods of time. However, that's not really going to be a problem in game as a battle match will typically last much less time than it would take for this to get repetitive. However, if you do end up listening to an extended version of this, it does end up feeling a little bit samey after a while. At number 109, we have SNES Mario Circuit 3, and unlike Battle Course 1, this one doesn't really do much to modernize the original version of this song. It sounds almost identical to the original SNES version with some added percussion. So why is this above Battle Course 1? Well, the original melody is just way more solid in my opinion on this one. This one is even more catchy, and I don't feel like it gets nearly as repetitive. I do kind of wish they based this remix on the GBA version of the song, however. As in Super Circuit, the remix that they had for SNES Mario Circuit courses sounded a lot more like it was using brass style instruments, even though it was of course synth and incredibly compressed. If that was realized into an actual big band arrangement of this song, that would be amazing as it would fit so much better with the rest of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack. Even still, this version of the song is still pretty fun to listen to. I just only wish that they expanded upon it even more. Then at number 108, we have our third SNES track in a row, we have SNES Donut Plains 3. And although the instrumentation on this one is pretty simple, having mainly just a synth organ, I just really love the way this track sounds. It has a great vibe and it's really groovy. Plus it has just some really good riffs that I love. Moving on to number 107, we have Got a Trophy, which plays if you get a top 3 spot after a Grand Prix or a set of versus races. This song nails the vibe of being a triumphant theme for after you win all 4 races, or at least get an average of a winning score. The electric guitar is phenomenal with some great riffs and the other instrumentation as well, especially the brass, really just makes this feel like such a full piece of music. It is a bit of a shorter loop, meaning it can get a little repetitive, which is why it is this far down on the list, but it is seriously so, so nice to listen to, and it fits the vibe of where it is in the game perfectly.
Then at 106, we have the Mario Kart TV review, and this is actually what plays just before you hear our previous song on this list, or the No Trophy theme, depending on how you did in the Grand Prix. This also happens to be the first song on this list that doesn't loop, and therefore it's also the shortest song on this entire ranking. And that is mainly the reason it's this low on the list. It's just really short, and I couldn't justify putting it any higher. However, the 35 seconds that you do get of this song are so, so good. It has similar praise to the You Got a Trophy theme, except taken up to an 11. The electric guitar, the brass, everything is just better in this, and I absolutely love it. Moving on to number 105, we have 3DS Neo Bowser City. And this might just have the most musical references of any Mario Kart track ever. It's got the Mario Kart Wii Circuit theme, the Mario Kart 7 Circuit theme, the Mario Kart 7 Main theme, and Toad's Turnpike. And they actually made Toad's Turnpike sound good because they used it as a counter melody instead of a main melody. The arrangement of this song is done so, so well, but the reason it's this far down on the list is because the instrumentation isn't really all there. It's mainly all just synth. At 104, we have DS Peach Gardens. Overall, this song is just really nice to listen to. It doesn't really get repetitive after a while, and the violin and accordion blend together beautifully. This arrangement of the song also just feels really full as well, because it has multiple different backing instruments that constantly just fill in the blank space that would otherwise be there. For instance, there are some steel drums that you can't really hear too well unless you listen closely, but they complement the song perfectly. At 103, we have Dragon Palace Outside, and similar to Sweet Sweet Kingdom, this is kind of just a worse version of Dragon Driftway, with a bunch of added sound effects on top. The same criticisms as Sweet Sweet Kingdom apply here, however, I think Dragon Driftway is a better song than Sweet Sweet Canyon, so naturally Dragon Palace is higher than Sweet Sweet Kingdom. The extra sound effects also aren't nearly as bad as they were in Sweet Sweet Kingdom. I still feel they do take away from the original song quite a bit, however, not nearly as much as in that course. And at 102, Dragon Palace Inside, we have basically the exact same song, except this version has a little bit of chanting added over the previous version. Now, normally I would have thought that more sound effects would have made this even worse than the original Dragon Driftway, however, I feel like this kind of works in its favor, it's almost like a front-running variant of the Battle Course version of the music. Moving on to number 101, we have SNES Bowser's Castle 3. This song is super intense throughout, with shredding electric guitar and really great drums. And it perfectly fits how difficult this track is. It's this low on the list, however, because there isn't much variety of instrumentation and the loop is kinda short as well, so it can get pretty repetitive after a while. And then kicking off our top 100, we have Mario Kart Tour's Rome Avanti. This song has a pretty unique feel to it when compared to the rest of the soundtrack. The combination of the mandolin and clarinet isn't really something you hear often, but it sounds amazing here. That plus the violins and accordion that you find later in the song gives this some great instrumentation. However, I will say the melody itself isn't all too interesting, which is why it's this low on the list. At 99, we have Toad Harbor. This song overall is just really pleasant to listen to. It sounds so laid back. The steel drums combined with the electric guitar is just a really nice sound. And it perfectly fits this track.
Moving on to number 98, we have SNES Rainbow Road. Similar to Battle Course 1, this takes the original song from the SNES and modernizes it while still keeping its retro feel. However, this time there has been some really great percussion added and also some violins that make the song feel more full overall. And overall, this is just fun to listen to. It's great to bop your head to. However, I will say the original melody from the SNES doesn't exactly hold up incredibly well when compared to many of the other songs on this ranking, which is why it's this far down on the list. At 97, we have Tour Berlin Byways. And this is another song that's pretty unique in the soundtrack, being the only dubstep style song in the entire game. And I'm typically not a huge fan of this style of music, however, I really do enjoy this. It's just so high energy and I love it. And while the F-Zero results theme might have been the best results theme in the base game, if we include the DLC, then the best results theme is by far Yoshi's Island results at our 96th spot. They pulled out the entire big band for a results theme that is a remake of the gold theme from the original Yoshi's Island, and it is so, so good. The only reason it is not super high up on this list is because being a results theme, it is a fairly short loop, meaning it can get kinda repetitive over time. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it still sounds absolutely amazing. The instrumentation and arrangement here is absolutely phenomenal. Moving on to number 95, we have Sunshine Airport. Similar to Toad Harbor, this track is just pretty relaxing while also not lacking energy. And the sort of mute filter that's applied over the music almost makes it sound like it's something that you could hear in an airport over the loudspeakers. Even though it's not a shorter loop, this one can get a little bit repetitive after a while, however, mainly because there's not a huge amount of variety in instrumentation. However, the actual composition of the song is so good that it was able to make it this high up in the list. At number 94, we have the song from the debut track of the Booster Course Pass, Tour Paris Promenade. And this song absolutely nails the style of classic French music. The accordion sounds so great here, especially combined with what I believe to be either an oboe or a clarinet, though I could be wrong. And the violin duetting with the accordion towards the end of the loop is just so, so nice. Overall, this song was executed extremely well and definitely deserves to be this high on this list. I'm honestly a little surprised it didn't rank any higher, it's just there are so many amazing songs in the soundtrack that happen to be a bit better. Moving on to number 93, we have GCN DK Mountain. And I'm a little bit conflicted about this song. On the one hand, the original tune is extremely catchy and holds up really well. However, this version of the song that appears in Wave 6 of the Booster Course Pass doesn't really do much to expand upon that original version. What was originally a synthesized xylophone has now been recorded with a live one, which I do appreciate. However, other than that, all that's really been added is some flute. And though that does sound really good and it's made it this far on the list because of it, I can't help but think it would have been so so much better if they added in some trumpets similar to the Fat Cat remix of the song. At number 92, we have the local multiplayer theme, and this song is so good for absolutely no reason. Like, realistically, local multiplayer has to be one of the least played modes in Mario Kart, right? And for some reason, they turned out this song, which absolutely slaps. It's even better than the regular online theme, hence why it's so much higher on the ranking than that was. It's only this low on the list because it is a bit of a shorter loop, therefore it gets kind of repetitive. You get the gist of that by now with how many songs that that's been a bit of a problem for. At 91, we have Wii Koopa Cape Underwater. Of the three versions of Koopa Cape, this is definitely the most calm, and although it is my least favorite of those three, I definitely still do really enjoy it. No matter what the instrumentation is, you really can't go wrong with the main melody of Koopa Cape.
At number 90, we have GCN Sherbetland, which for the longest time I could have sworn was Sherbetland, but nope, there is no R there the more you know. Winter themed levels always have some of the best music in my opinion, and this is no different. This whole song just screams cozy. The main melody sounds great here, being played on what I believe is a harpsichord, and the whistles returning from Double Dash is a really nice touch. At 89, we have Wii Daisy Circuit. This was one of my favorite songs from Mario Kart Wii. The piano sounded so good in the original version, and I was super excited to hear it re-recorded with live instruments when I heard its announcement for the Booster Course Pass. And although the main melody is still just as great as ever, I will say the instrumentation on this version, even though it was recorded with live instruments, just isn't as good within the original because they took away the piano, relegating it to only the intro to the song. Don't get me wrong, the combination of violin, flute, and accordion and playing this melody sounds absolutely amazing here and that's why it's this high on the list however it just doesn't sound as good as that original piano And moving on to number 88, we have a very similar sounding song, GCN Daisy Cruiser. Even though this one has definitely more of an islandy feel with the main instruments being steel drums, the backing violins sound very similar to Daisy Circuit and I think they fit even better here. They make the song sound so much more full in a way that's frankly beautiful and a massive improvement over the original. At number 87, we have Twisted Mansion. This song perfectly nails the vibe of the track, sounding spooky without necessarily sounding creepy per se, if that makes sense. And the combination of organ, violin, and xylophone just sounds really great overall. At 86, we have Sweet Sweet Canyon. This song just sounds so bouncy and bubbly and it's just really fun to listen to. The combination of the accordion and the violin works so, so well. I do feel like the song could have been a bit better if they used a live drum set instead of having synthesized percussion, but it still sounds absolutely incredible. Moving on to number 85, we have GCN Luigi's Mansion, which is a bit of an interesting song because this actually isn't a remix of the Luigi's Mansion battle mode theme from Double Dash, as that just shared the music with GCN Bowser's Castle. This is actually a remix of the course music for DS Luigi's Mansion. And I'm honestly glad they ended up remixing that instead of the original because it is so much better and it is such a good song. This one is a bit of a shorter loop, but it just doesn't get repetitive after a while. I don't know why, but this one is just so so much fun to listen to no matter how long you listen to it for. At 84, we have Wii Moo Moo Meadows. And if you compare this to the original version of this song, there is a night and day difference. Not only does the live violin sound so much better, but they also added in a violin solo, which sounds so, so good. Outside of the solo though, the song can get a little bit repetitive over time, which is why it is this low on the list. That in addition to the fact that the main melody is a little bit weak at times. At 83, we have GBA Sunset Wilds, and this song has definitely grown on me a lot more since it came out in Wave 5 of the Booster Course Pass. Originally, I was a little bit disappointed in it because I was expecting something more akin to the Pan Man remix of the song, which is much more fast-paced. But the more I've listened to it, the more I've come to enjoy that combination of fiddle, banjo, and trumpet. This is really the only song in the Mario Kart series that I can think of that goes for the vibe of the Wild West, and it nails it perfectly.
At 82, we have N64 Calamari Desert. Another desert track, this song has a very similar vibe to that of Sunset Wilds. And while I do still maintain the belief that Sunset Wilds is the only Mario Kart song that really nails the Wild West vibe, I do think I enjoy Calamari Desert overall a little bit better. The instrumentation is phenomenal here, and the combination of sounds in this song makes it feel somehow adventurous and calming at the same time. At 81, we have, somewhat surprisingly, Rainbow Road. Historically, Rainbow Roads have had some of the best music in their respective games. However, that's sadly not the case for Mario Kart 8's take on the course. It's by no means a bad song, the electric guitar here is great, but there is a reason it's on the bottom half of this list. The vast majority of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack is just so good, and this just really doesn't come up to par with a great deal of the tracks. At 80, we have Super Bell Subway. You can probably tell at this point on the list that I love the accordion, and it is amazing here, especially combined with the trumpet. Not to mention the synth and xylophone, which sound amazing as well, and overall, the melody of this song is just so, so good. I made this ranking, and it's insane to me that it's this low on this list. There's just so much good music in this game, it's crazy. Moving on to number 79, we have Wild Woods. And this song is so well orchestrated. Not only does it perfectly fit the vibe of the track, sounding both mysterious and adventurous at the same time, but it's also, to my knowledge at least, the only song in the soundtrack with a 5-4 time signature, which I'm pretty sure is difficult to do while still having the song sound as smooth as this one does. That difficulty I could be very well wrong about, however, because although I am a music nerd, I am a music nerd who has never taken music theory or actually learned an instrument, so if I'm completely wrong, please let me know down in the comments below. Regardless, this song's time signature makes it really unique, and it's sounds really good on top of that, which has solidly earned it this spot on the list. At 78, we have We Koopa Cape. Like I mentioned when we talked about the underwater version of this song, the melody of this course is overall just really nice. However, this version sounds a lot more upbeat and bouncy when compared to the more calm underwater variant that we covered earlier. And even though it's definitely not the best of the three versions of this song, it is certainly still very fun to listen to. At 77, we have GBA Ribbon Road. And this has a very different vibe from the original version of the song back on the GBA. It sounds a lot less upbeat and it's definitely calmer and slower. And although this is still an amazing rendition of the song, which sounds really funky and has great instrumentation, I do think I prefer the actual theme of the original one better. And I really do wish that they instead used the original arrangement just recorded with live instruments, as that would have sounded absolutely amazing. At number 76, we have Tour Singapore Speedway Chinatown. And although I don't like this nearly as much as the regular version of this song, I still do really appreciate that a unique piece was orchestrated for this section of the track, especially given that you do not drive through it for very long at all. And even if it can't top the regular version of Singapore Speedway, it still keeps the main theme from that version of the song, which is absolutely amazing, and therefore carries this song all the way up to this spot on the list.
And kicking off the top 75, we have Dragon Driftway. And right off the bat, this song has a very interesting vibe. The Urhu, which is the main instrument of this song, I don't believe appears in any other song in the game, minus the Dragon Palace songs, which are just pretty much rips of this one, but we've already gone over that. And if that wasn't sick enough, Takashi Mazazaki and Tepe Kawasaki go absolutely ham on electric guitar and bass. And trust me what I say, we'll be hearing a lot more of them later, as they have brought a lot of great songs to this soundtrack. At number 74, we have N64 Choco Mountain. And this song does a great job of keeping the vibe of the original version from the N64. And overall, it just sounds fun. The combination of the fiddle, banjo, and harmonica really works great together. Not to mention, I'm a sucker for the keyboard solo towards the end of the loop. At 73, we have GBA Snowland. Now, honestly, I'm not sure if this track is entirely justified on being this high on the list. However, it just sounds really nice and fun and cozy, and I just like the sound of it. It's not really that much of a complex arrangement of the original. However, I just really like the way it sounds, and it's my ranking, so I'm gonna put it here, and not much else has to be said. The same can also be said for Choco Mountain. I just really like the sounds of both songs, and even if they can be relatively simple compared to a lot of the other songs in the game, I just think that sometimes simplicity is great for conveying the vibe of a track. Next up in our 72nd spot, we have Mario Kart Tour's Los Angeles Laps. And oh boy, this song is funky. Seriously, I think this is one of the best themes in the entire game. However, the instrumentation isn't really all there for me. The bass guitar combined with the saxophone is great at the start. However, I feel like the song overall has a bit of an over-reliance on synth. Normally, I'm not super opposed to synth, but I feel like they could have used a better sound font here in order to make it sound better, because what they decided to use kind of clashes a little bit with the saxophone, in my opinion. The actual tune itself is amazing, however, I feel like the actual execution of it did fall short a little bit. It's still absolutely incredible to listen to, however, and I can't wait to see how they remix this next if this song does get remade in a future Mario Kart game. At 71, we have Mario Kart Tour's Tokyo Blur, and this track moved around a lot when I was trying to finalize my ranking to make this video. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty good song and it's nice to listen to, and I would say normally it would go a lot higher on this list because I really do like the big band style that it goes for. However, the main problem that it has is in its melody, because although it is really fun to listen to while you're listening to it, for some reason it just ends up being really forgettable once you stop listening to it. It has a nice Toad Circuit reference, which I really do enjoy, but other than that, there's not really a whole lot memorable about this song, which is why it ended up being as low on the list as it is. However, it's still pretty high up, all things considered, because once again, it's very fun to listen to while you're listening to it.
And our number 70 spot might be a little bit controversial for being down this low on the list, we have Mario Kart Wii's Moonview Highway. First, let's start with the positives of this song. It has an absolutely insane beat. It sounds so good, and the electronic feel of the song I feel like is the perfect realization of how the original one sounded on the Wii. I feel like this is just the culmination of how this was always meant to sound. That being said, it's just personally not my favorite. I don't really like the heavy electronic feel Feel that this song has, this one or the original one from Mario Kart Wii. I understand that many people absolutely love this version of the song, and I think it is a great improvement over its original, however, it's just really not for me, and that's just personal preference. After all, this list is based on my subjective ranking. But if you now think my opinion is completely invalid and it's a crime that I put this song so low, then feel free to leave a comment down below. I feel like it's far enough into the video for it to be okay for me to say that again, even though I asked y'all to comment earlier in the video. And in 69th place, nice, we have a song that you probably didn't expect to be this high up on the list, the Mario Kart TV theme. This plays in the Mario Kart TV menu where you can view replays of your previous races. And if you just rush right to your desired replay and you don't really listen to the song for that often, you might just think the first few sections of the song, which do repeat a couple of times, just repeat indefinitely and it's a very simple loop. However, that is not the case at all, as there is actually a quite complex song in this menu that not many people are even aware of, and it is jazzy. The organ keyboard solo is absolutely insane, just listen to this. And already at 68th place, we are starting to get into the best of the best, which is truly a testament to how amazing this game's soundtrack is. And in this place, we have Thwomp Ruins, which is one of my favorite tracks in the game, and it has equally amazing music. This song just screams adventure all the way throughout, and the build up to the main melody, which sounds so clean on flute, sounds absolutely insane, and it is just absolutely a joy to listen to over and over again. At number 67, we have a fan favorite, DS Wario Stadium and DS Waluigi Pinball. The only song that plays over two separate tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because Nintendo decided to not make a new version of this remix for Waluigi Pinball, which is a little bit of a shame. This remix fits Wario Stadium perfectly, however I don't feel like it fully encompasses the vibe of Waluigi Pinball. So even though it is heavily skewed towards the theming of one of the two tracks it plays over, it is still an absolute banger, and in my opinion, one of the best versions of this song that Nintendo has officially released. And at number 66, we have by far my favorite of the three versions of Koopa Cape, we have Koopa Cape River. Now this is pretty similar to the main version of Koopa Cape, except for a few small changes which make a world of difference. For one, there are some wacky synth notes that play throughout the whole thing that just make the whole track sound so much more fun and chaotic, and I absolutely love those, and that is a great addition to the track. But the main reason it's up so much higher than the two other versions of this song is because it's got a fiddle and a banjo and they go crazy. There is a fiddle, banjo, duet, solo, whatever you want to call it, and it sounds absolutely insane. Not to mention the fiddle and banjo also play the intro to this song and it sounds so good. It honestly reminds me a little bit to the intro to a lot of the mini games in Nintendo Land, how those sounded. And that game also had an amazing soundtrack. And so I don't go on an entire new rant about this song and so the video doesn't get longer than it already is. Is, I'm just gonna have you listen to this solo and you'll see exactly what I mean. It sounds amazing. And 
And at number 65, we have another song where the violin goes absolutely crazy. We got N64, Yoshi Valley. This song is chaos. It's goofy, silly, fun chaos, and that perfectly fits what Yoshi Valley is. I mean, if you need any proof of that, look at the mini-map of this course. There is no way you're making any sense of that, and that is the fun of the track. Although I did enjoy the Koopa Cape solo a little bit better than how Yoshi Valley sounds, I'm still putting this over it because the violin goes absolutely crazy for the entire song on this one, which I believe has its own merit, and therefore makes this overall a bit of a better song. And one last side note about this song, you might have never noticed this before, but somehow, someway, Nintendo managed to make steel drums sound country. I don't know how they pulled it off, but they did. Listen to this. And at number 64, we have 3DS Rock Rock Mountain. So remember how I said the instrumentation and theming of London Loop was pretty good, it's just there was nothing holding it all together? Well, this is how good of a song you can get when you have stuff holding it all together. This is essentially just London Loop, but better a million times over. The instrumentation and melody here work so well together. Not only is the song just super catchy, but the electric guitar player is going absolutely crazy. I'm not sure who performed the songs for the Booster Course Pass, so so I'm not sure if this is Takashi Masazaki as it was in the base game tracks, however whoever it was they did a phenomenal job. The main melody here is super catchy as well and pretty memorable. And on top of that there are also counter melodies with the synths underneath that which add a little bit more depth to the song which is much appreciated, especially when you're listening to it over and over again. Then at number 63, we have 3DS Music Park, and honestly, I was debating whether I should put this above or below Rock Rock Mountain, and the reason I ended up putting it above it is because this one is a very dynamic music track, and what I mean by that is it changes a lot while you're racing, corresponding to what happens in the actual race itself. As you go through the different portions of the track, driving over pianos, drums, and xylophones, those instruments will play with the music, and it'll be in time with it, it won't just be discordant, and it's just a really really cool feature that I think really puts this track's music over the edge into this spot on the list. The melody itself is also just bouncy and fun and just great to listen to, and honestly I think this might have gone even higher on the list had this used live instruments, because sadly this is one of the few songs in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to be pretty much fully synthesized, except I do believe that is an actual electric guitar that's played. If this used live trumpets for the trumpet sections however, I think this could have been even better, and I really hope that they do decide to do that whenever they remake this track next. Next. At 62, we have the third 3DS track in a row, 3DS Rosalina's Ice World. And this track somehow manages to walk the line between sounding super clean with its piano while also keeping the cozy vibes of a lot of the previous winter tracks that have been on this list. The main synth melody is complemented perfectly by acoustic instruments in the background, which I believe are a piano playing low notes as well as bells, although I could be wrong because it's not super easy to hear the individual background instruments. But whatever those instruments are, they fit in perfectly with this song and sound absolutely amazing, solidly earning it this spot this high on the list. And now moving on to our 61st spot, we have the very grand sounding Tour Athens Dash. The combination of the trumpets, violins, clarinet, and what I believe to be a mandolin, although it might be a hammered dulcimer, they all work together and complement each other so well, and it just sounds amazing. The constant backing violins accompanying the drums in keeping the beat really helps this track have the feel of propelling itself forward, and I just really like the overall sound of that. This song has barely changed at all from its version in Mario Kart Tour, 
where it's just been re-recorded with live instruments, and it still sounds absolutely amazing. Say what you will about Mario Kart Tour, but that game has some great music, and also some not so great music given London Loop came from there, but whatever. At our number 60 spot, we have Mario Kart Tour's Vancouver Velocity. Overall, the instrumentation here is pretty simple, just having mainly some violins as well as some synth, which I believe is probably either a keyboard or guitar. However, some people have speculated for it to be an iwi. However, even with this more simple instrumentation, the song's actual composition sounds amazing. I don't even really know how to describe it, but it perfectly fits and enhances the vibe of the track itself. And I just can't help but bob my head every single time I hear it. At number 59, we have Dolphin Shoals Underwater, and I'm including the deep water and shallow water variants of Dolphin Shoals in this because they are very similar to one another and they don't have that many differences at all. However, the above water variant will be featured later on this list in its own spot. Overall, this song is really calming and perfectly fits the portion of the track that it plays over. The combination of the steel drums and guitar works great, and the backing synth, which although it is very quiet, definitely adds a lot to the song, sounds great as well if you listen closely. So although this might not be the best version of Dolphin Shoals, it is not bad by any means, as you can never really go wrong with the melody of this amazing song. And at number 58, we have the song with one of the best, if not the best bass line in the entire game, Super Bell Subway Underground. Seriously, there's only one other song in the game that has a bass line that I think can come even close to competing with this one, and this one is just absolutely insane. Tepe Kawasaki completely just cooked here. I don't think I need to say anymore. Just listen to this and hear for yourself. At number 57, we have Electrodrome, and fun fact, this is actually the only Mario Kart track that has only one word in its title. This has a very similar style to Moonview Highway, being comprised entirely of synths and going for a very electronic vibe. So why is it so much higher on the list? Well, simply put, this one is just a lot more upbeat and honestly, I think it's just so much more catchy. The whole song just has this kind of bouncy feel to it that I absolutely love. Moving on to number 56, we have Mario Kart Tour's Merry Mountain. This song is the literal definition of festive, and it fits the track so, so well. We've had a lot of different winter tracks already on this list, however, this is the first and only one that is purely just Christmas themed, and it works so, so well. The trumpets, accordion, flutes, and bells all just sound so, so good together. Heck, the front-running version of this course even has sleigh bells instead of just a standard drum beat. It is just overall such a perfect embodiment of the festive mood, and it has definitely earned its spot this high on the list. It is just so much fun to listen to.
At number 55, we have DS Mario Circuit, and this is one of two songs on this list that do a great job of blending the original DS sound font with the more modern big band style of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack. And I honestly think this is one of the best ways of going about bringing back a song for a retro track. Not to mention, they made this song funky in comparison to the original. They added in some record scratches, and they also added in a organ keyboard, which sounds so good accenting some of the main notes. Seriously, just a really solid song overall. At number 54, we've got a classic Mario Kart Wii's Maple Treeway. And just as Merry Mountain was the perfect embodiment of the holiday season, the same can be said for Maple Treeway for Autumn. Overall, this song is just super nice to listen to, and I feel like it walks the fine line between being somewhat calming while also adding a little bit of intensity to a race, if that makes sense. The introduction of the oboe to the song as well when compared to the Mario Kart Wii version is a very welcome addition as well. The oboe is used relatively sparingly throughout the Mario Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, however, whenever it does show up, it always sounds great, and here is no different. But while Maple Treeway might be somewhat calming, our song in 53rd place is anything but, which is Mario Kart Wii's Wario's Goldmine. This entire song pretty much just sounds like a banjo solo, and I am all for it. It is just so chaotic in the best way possible and perfectly fits the track. The synths and whistles also add so much personality to the song as well. And there's even a fiddle solo, similar to that on the river version of Koopa Cape, which I've already established I like very much. At number 52, we have a song that I'm actually really surprised ended up being ranked this high, but when I listened to it, it was way better than I remembered, and that is Ice Ice Outpost. And honestly, the reason this is this high up is just because the violin solo is super clean. It's not even necessarily the most complicated or crazy, but it just sounds really good within the form of the main melody of the song. And the main melody itself is pretty good as well, although I wouldn't have necessarily chosen synths for it if I were the one making this song. Overall, I really really just love the high energy this song has, and I really do think that it deserves to be this high on the list. And now moving on to number 51, we have 3DS Piranha Plant Slide. Now this is sadly yet again another one of the tracks that when it got brought over to Mario Kart 8, it wasn't re-recorded with any live instruments and instead just synthesizers were used. However, what's a little bit strange about this is that for some reason the quality of the MIDI trumpets on Piranha Plant Slide is just so much better than that on Music Park, and I'm not really sure why given both of these were base Mario Kart 8 tracks. Whatever the case may be, they do still sound great here and I honestly thought they were actual trumpets for a little bit before it got to the portion with some of the faster notes and then you're able to more clearly see that they're synthesized. Overall, this song is just super catchy and I love that they've based it around the original underground theme from Super Mario Brothers. It really contributes well to the overall aesthetic of the course. Kicking off our top 50, we have Animal Crossing Autumn. Now, I very much do enjoy all four of the Animal Crossing track themes, however, I definitely feel this one is the weakest. 
That isn't to say it's bad in any way, shape, or form. I, in fact, really do enjoy listening to it. If I didn't, it would not be this high up on the list. The combination of the light electric guitar and accordion is really nice and definitely conveys the feeling of autumn that this track is going for. I don't feel like it does that to the same degree that Maple Trueway does with its respective course, however I feel like the composition of this is a bit better, which is why it's a bit higher on the list. It would have been nice to have a few extra backing instruments to make this track feel a little bit more full, but overall I still really do enjoy it. And then at number 49, over 70 spots above the last version of this song, we have Mario Kart Tour's Madrid Drive. And it's honestly crazy how the ranking worked out that this was so much higher than the other two versions of this track. However, it just sounds so much better when you have all of the elements of this song together rather than just in the other versions where there's only a few of them at a time. The guitar, violin, tuba, accordion, and those weird percussion things that I have no idea what they're called, but they sound so cool, they all come together beautifully in this song. I honestly don't see how anyone could have nailed the theming of this track any better than how Nintendo did with this song, and it is just absolutely amazing how good this is. And then at number 48, we have 3DS Rainbow Road. And this song is one of the few in this entire soundtrack that I think synth was 100% the right option to go for. It just fits this song so perfectly and gives it almost a magical feeling. I would make the argument that the reason the course itself is so beloved is because of its amazing atmosphere, which is fueled by its incredible music. The actual composition of this song is so, so great as well. Not only does it have a great main melody on its own, but the way it incorporates the N64 Rainbow Road theme is absolutely amazing. And I'm honestly really surprised that it didn't end up going any higher on this list. Moving on to number 47, we have Tor Piranha Plant Cove. First of all, this song is the perfect example of having great instrumentation. Not only do all the instruments just work well together and produce a really nice sound, but there are so many instruments and yet they all somehow work together seamlessly to create this masterpiece of a song. There's flute, mandolin, the weird percussion things from Madrid Drive, steel drums, violin, and synth, and all of them work together so well. Not to mention the whole song just screams and adventure, which perfectly fits the track. And I would say it enhances the amazing atmosphere that this track already has by quite a lot. Moving up to number 46, we have Animal Crossing Spring. The actual arrangement of this version of the song actually bears a lot of resemblance to the summer version of it. However, the instrumentation is quite a bit different as well as the solo. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, unlike the fall version of this song, this one has got a solo done by a trombone which plays amazingly throughout the whole song and then goes absolutely ham towards the end of the loop on its solo. Plus, the other instrumentation of the flutes and the funky electric guitar in the background sound great in addition to the trombone as well. This definitely sounds a lot more full than the autumn version of the song.
And then at number 45, we got another version of Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing Winter. And I'd say this is the most unique out of all four Animal Crossing variants because unlike the other three, this is in a slightly higher key. The combination of the accordion and the soprano sax is just so good and it really just feels incredibly cozy. This honestly pulls off the winter track feel more than any other of the winter songs that have been on this list so far. And while Merry Mountain might have been the most festive, I think this just embodies the pure cozy nature of winter better than anything else on this list. But if you thought Animal Crossing Winter had some great accordion, you haven't heard anything yet because next up in our 44th spot, we have the song which in my opinion has hands down the best accordion playing in the entire game, Tour Amsterdam Drift. The kind of call and response style to the opening with the vocals and the accordion going absolutely crazy sounds so, so good. And when it gets to the main portion of the song, the accordion does not slow down and it just sounds absolutely incredible. And that's without even mentioning the drums, which are amazing as well and add even more energy to this song. This is seriously one of my favorite songs in the game and I am so surprised that it is only at the 44th spot. However, there are just so many incredible songs in this game. It's honestly insane how amazing this soundtrack is. And at our 43rd spot, we have finally made it to the very first track in the game, Mario Kart Stadium. And this track does its job perfectly. It feels almost like a grand opening to the game in the best way possible. The combination of the electric guitar, trumpets, flutes, and violins, it all just blends together in such a perfect package that really just makes this whole track feel so grandiose. This is the new anti-gravity mechanic. You're able to drive up walls. You have a whole game ahead of you and you are just getting started. At number 42, we have our final of the four Animal Crossing variants, Animal Crossing Summer. Like I mentioned earlier, this is very similar in structure to the spring version of this song, except for instead of a trombone, there's a violin and the solo is even more crazy. The song itself also just sounds overall a lot more full due to there being more backing instruments and sound effects. And it really just feels like the most vibrant and energetic version of this song. At number 41, we have Tour Bangkok Rush. And this song does a great job of blending the East Asian style of music with the big band style that Mario Kart is known for at this point. The trumpet and saxophone sections are so good and the bass is absolutely phenomenal as always. Not to mention the flute section goes absolutely crazy and there's even a flute solo. How many times have you heard of a flute solo? And they knocked it out of the park with this. Take a listen.
And at number 40, we have Cloud Top Cruise, over 80 spaces away from the Thundercloud variant of this song. It's insane how the instrumentation can change how good a song is by this degree. And yet somehow, there's this night and day difference between the two versions of the same orchestrated song. And I have to say, the instrumentation here sounds so, so good. It sounds like something taken right out of Mario Galaxy, with the full orchestra, with the trumpets and the violins, and even the guitar in the background. Which I guess makes sense, given that this song is known for for referencing Gussie Garden Galaxy, and as I said earlier, I may not be the biggest fan of Galaxy, but I can acknowledge that that game has some amazing music. Moving on to number 39, we have N64 Royal Raceway. The tune was already great to begin with in the original version of this track, but if you compare this to the original, you can tell they added some funk to this one. The combination of the organ with the trumpets is just so clean and it sounds absolutely amazing. I only wish they used an actual bass guitar instead of just having an electronic bass line in the background because I feel like that would have made this song even better. But despite that, it is already an absolutely phenomenal rendition of an already phenomenal song. And I can't wait to see how they remix this next whenever they remake this track or Mario or Luigi Raceway in another Mario Kart game. And in 38th place, we have our first song from a battle course in a while, Lunar Colony. And this song just sounds like one that's meant for space, and I think Nintendo absolutely nailed the vibe of the track with this song. The synth fits so, so well, and the electric guitar sounds absolutely amazing. It also has a really solid beat as well, which is great for a Mario Kart track, but especially great for a battle course. Then at number 37, we have the song from my second favorite course in the game, we DK Summit. Now I'm aware this might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion, however I think this is so much better than the original version of this song back on the Wii. I think the electric guitar sounds so so great here and fits the track perfectly. I also prefer the way the synth sounds in this version when compared to the original, I just think the sound font here is just quite a bit cleaner. Not to mention the drums are so good on this as well, this is essentially just an improvement upon the original in pretty much every way, at least in my opinion. But the melody itself is really what puts it this high on this list, which is great in both versions of the track. And at number 36, we have another fan favorite Wii track, Mushroom Gorge. And other than the fact that the audio is a little bit less compressed, this is pretty much exactly the same as the Mario Kart Wii version of the song, and that, in this case, isn't really a bad thing. It's always sounded so, so good, and it didn't really need to change, especially given that the synthesizer wasn't emulating any actual instruments in the original Mario Kart Wii version. It kind of just went for its own unique sound, which has been carried over to the 8 Deluxe rendition of the song. And moving on to number 35, we have the last of the fully original Battle Course themes to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Battle Stadium. Everything about this song is just great. From the trumpets, to the backing saxophones, to the electric guitar, to the insane bass in the background, everything just flows together so, so nicely, and I absolutely love it. The only issue I have with this is that it is a little bit of a shorter loop. However, that's not too much of an issue because it doesn't really get repetitive because of how good the rest of the song is. Plus, I absolutely love the synth solo.
And at number 34, we have GBA Mario Circuit. And everything about this song is great too. The funky electric guitar in the background sounds amazing, and the combination of the sax and brass sections, it just works so, so well. And a fun fact about this song you might not know is that it actually wasn't based off of the version that appeared in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Instead, it was based off the beta version of the circuit theme from that game that ended up being scrapped for the one that you'll hear in the game if you plop in a cartridge into your GBA. There are definitely resemblances between the two versions Versions. However, this is definitely more clearly based off of the beta version of the original song, and that almost makes me wonder, does GBA Ribbon Road sound so different in Mario Kart 8 when compared to Super Circuit because it was also based off of that same beta build? We may never know because we don't have access to the full build, only a few bits of footage from when the game was showcased before release. And moving on to number 33, we have one of the jazziest songs in the game, Tour New York Minute. I said it during my Wave 2 ranking and I'll say it again here, every time I listen to this song I half expect Frank Sinatra to pop out somewhere and start singing. It seriously does a great job of nailing that classic big band sound. The trumpets and sax sound great here, as always in this game, and everything being backed by a string bass is a really nice touch. However, what really shines here is the clarinet, which just sounds so, so good. I don't know who played clarinet on the Booster Course Pass tracks, but whoever they are, they are super talented and they won 100% showed it here. And now moving on to number 32, we have Excite Bike Arena, and I absolutely love the style that Nintendo decided to go with for this song. They basically just took the original theme from the NES, which was a very short loop, expanded it, and then souped it up, adding in a bunch of percussion, some extra chip tune, and overall just injecting this song with so much energy to the point where I honestly feel like this could work as music in a Smash Brothers game. This song overall is just so much fun to listen to, and I am honestly super impressed with how they were able to get this from just the original Excite Bike theme, which did not have a lot to it. And then moving on to our 31st spot, we have 3DS DK Jungle. This arrangement of DK Island Swing from the original Donkey Kong Country is so, so good and is one of my favorite official arrangements of this song. The bass is so good and the whole song has this kind of funky groove to it that I absolutely love. However, there is one glaring issue that's kept it from going much higher on this list and that's the fact that this was just ripped from the Mario Kart 7 version of this song. It's basically the exact same except slightly less compressed. And that that means no live instruments. The sax, the trumpets, the piano, they're all synthesized and they just sound so much less crisp than the majority of the other songs in this game. And that is really such a shame because the arrangement once again of this song is absolutely incredible and it really does suit itself to the live big band feel of Mario Kart 8 soundtrack. I really do hope this track gets remade in the next Mario Kart game, that way we can hear what this song will sound like with live instruments, and I absolutely cannot wait until that does happen, whether it is in this next Mario Kart game or whichever one that follows that. But then moving up to 30th place, we have GCN Waluigi Stadium. Now this song has come under some scrutiny because it differed from the original in where it looped. In the original GCN and Wii version, the song would loop with the entire intro intact, meaning it would basically just start over from the very beginning of the song. However, in this case, it loops right past the intro, and honestly, I think this was a good change. I know that many people would have preferred it to be faithful to the original, however, I just think this sounds better, and it really does suit the new instrumentation a lot better. And speaking of that instrumentation, they absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. I love the instruments that they chose so much. They decided to replace the bass with a combination of Barry Sax and electric guitar and it sounds great. This is honestly, in my opinion, the perfect reimagining of this song. No complaints here whatsoever.
And in 29th place, we have Squeaky Clean Sprint. And I'll be honest, part of the reason this song is up so high on the list is because the tenor saxophone is my favorite saxophone, and that is the sax that they decided to use in this song. It just sounds so smooth. And that combined with the strings and the Harmon muted trumpets really gives us a classic big band sound. And it almost sounds like an old sitcom intro in the best way possible. And I feel like this is a little bit of a strange thing to say, but the music weirdly fits the track. I don't know why, but this just sounds right for a bathroom themed track. I have absolutely no idea why it sounds so right, but it does, and Nintendo absolutely killed it with the theming here. Then moving on to number 28, we have another one of the few songs that use the soprano sax in this game, Mario Circuit. And I'll be honest, this is one of the cleanest sounding songs in the entire game in my opinion. I just love the overall flow of this track. The main melody of the song also is a bit of a cool reference in itself as well. In past Mario Kart titles, the first track of the game would typically have the same song as the circuit theme. However, in Mario Kart 8, instead of doing that, this is a rearrangement of the first song in the game, which is Mario Kart Stadium. Which is, in my opinion, a great way to preserve the practice of keeping the same melody for the first track in the game and the circuit tracks, while also allowing each track in Mario Kart 8 to have its own song. If only the same could be said for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but Nintendo decided to not do this again and instead just reuse the same song from Wario Stadium for Waluigi Pinball. Yes, I'm still a bit salty about that. Learn from Mario Circuit, Nintendo. And for our 27th spot, tell me, what do you get when you cross two Nintendo franchises which are known for having phenomenal music? You get Urchin Underpass, which sounds so good. The musical styles of Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon blend so perfectly together. Nintendo has made practically countless remixes of Splatack at this point, but this one remains my absolute favorite because of how high energy it is. The electric guitar, the insane drums, and the weird inkling vocals make this one of the most fun battle tracks to listen to, and it makes it one of my favorite battle tracks to play on. I don't even really like the layout of Urchin Underpass that much, but the music makes this an absolute blast to play any of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's battle modes on. Number 26 is one of the best uses of dynamic music in this game, Mount Wario, and I decided to include all of the different sections of Mount Wario into one entry on this list instead of dividing all the different portions of this song into different parts of the list because they really do all fit so cohesively together and they don't really stand out nearly as much on their own. If you'd like to know more in depth how this works and how it makes this song so, so good, then I highly recommend 8-Bit Music Theory's video on this subject. However, the main thing you have to know is that this song is split into four main parts based on where you are in the track. Two different parts for lap one since it has an outdoor and indoor section, a different part for lap two, and a final grand part for lap three. And my absolute favorite portion of this has to be the transition from lap two into lap three. The electric guitar and violin go from trading solos back and forth with the backing trumpets blaring in the background to finally joining together to one big push to the finish for the final lap.
And kicking off our top 25, we have GBA Sky Garden. Now you could make the argument that the actual layout of the 8 Deluxe version of this track is worse than the original. However, that cannot be said for the music, as I think this is the perfect evolution of the original theme from the GBA. Seriously, everything in this song is just done right. The backing trumpets and the electric guitar sound so clean and the percussion really drives this song forward with a real sense of momentum. Then moving on to our 24th place, we have Shy Guy Falls. And this song perfectly captures the adventurous feel of this track. The flutes playing the main melody with the acoustic guitar in the background sounds so good. Plus the violin coming in towards the end of the loop sounds absolutely amazing as well. And while I do normally prefer a bass guitar or a string bass, I really do enjoy the sound of the synth bass here. It really does fit the song weirdly well, even though none of the other instruments are synthesized. And then at number 23, we have an absolute classic, Mario Kart Wii's Coconut Mall. I mean, what is there to say about this song that hasn't already been said? It may be a meme at this point, but it is unironically one of the best Mario Kart songs in existence. Now, some people have made the argument that the original version back in Mario Kart Wii was better than the 8 Deluxe rendition of the song because it had some extra low notes in the piano section to make that portion of the song feel more full. But to be honest, I think this clears the original version by far simply because of how amazing the live sax sounds in comparison to the old synthesized one. Plus, it's also a tenor sax, once again my favorite saxophone, so I might be a little bit biased towards it. The old synthesized accordion sections have now also been replaced with what I believe to be a melodica. I don't think it's an actual accordion because it sounds different from the accordion used on the rest of the soundtrack, but I feel like the melodica was definitely the right instrument to use here because it sounds a lot like the old synthesized accordion while also being a lot crisper given it's a live instrument. At number 22, we finally have the second track of the game, Water Park. And this whole song just sounds so fun throughout. It really leans into the big band aspect of Mario Kart 8's soundtrack, while also adding in some tropical elements to fit with the water park theming like steel drums. And I absolutely love the backing saxes and piano. They sound so good with the trumpets blaring and the steel drums playing the main melody. Seriously, this song overall is just really well put together and all of the instruments complement each other perfectly. And to be honest, I don't really have much else to say about this song. It's just really good and the music speaks for itself. And for number 21, we have quite a change of pace, Bowser's Castle. This song heavily leans into the metal aspect of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, and it sounds great here. Not to mention, I feel like it also fits a Bowser Castle a lot better than a lot of the previous Bowser Castle themes, because a lot of those just sounded more dark, mysterious, and gloomy, while this actually sounds like rock, something that Bowser's themes have come to be closely associated with in the Wii U and Switch eras. It even has some similar instrumentation to Bowser's themes from 3D World towards the end of the loop, as during the first portion of the loop, it does sound a lot more metal, while during the second portion, it adds in some big band elements, and I have to say, the Barry Sack and background horns sound so good.
And moving on to 20th place, we have one of the funkiest songs in the game, GBA Riverside Park. Now this one is a little bit of a shorter loop and it does have a bit more of a build up than other songs. However, it is completely justified in doing that when the main section of this song goes so hard when it has absolutely no right to. First of all, they use the berry sax as the baseline here, which I absolutely love and adds some funk to the song on its own. And if they stopped there, they made the horn section just trumpets like they normally Normally do, it still would have been an amazing song and it would have been pretty high on this list because the main melody of this song is still so good. But no, they decided to make the horn section on this song trombones and it gives this such a unique sound in comparison to a lot of the other brass sections in a lot of the other songs in this game and I absolutely love it. Riverside Park was one of the highlights of Wave 4 for me and this song was one of the main reasons behind that. It is seriously so good and I really do hope we get a song that's just as funky as this in the next Mario Kart game. And at number 19, we have the first of the two F Zero tracks in this game. Mute City. And I've gotta say, out of all the songs in this game, the F-Zero ones are the ones that take the jazz fusion theming of this soundtrack and run with it the most. Seriously, this sounds like something I could hear on a Dimension or T-Square album, which if you didn't know, those are some Japanese jazz fusion bands who actually had members play on the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack. One of which is Takashi Mazazaki on guitar, who I've mentioned previously in some of the other songs, but he goes absolutely ham on the electric guitar here. The drums go absolutely crazy on this song as well, and in the base Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game, this is pretty much the closest thing that we have to a drum solo, which plays right before the ending portion of the loop. And at number 18, we have what is, in my opinion, the best DS song remake in this game, DS Shroom Ridge. Remember how in the DS Mario Circuit section of this video, I mentioned how that was one of two songs that used the original DS sound font to accent the new live instruments? Well, this is the second of those two, and even though DS Mario Circuit is an amazing song in its own right, this is leaps and bounds ahead of it in my opinion. Seriously, I feel like this is one of the best modernizations of a retro Mario Kart song. It did a perfect job of blending the old sound font with the new live instruments. And then moving on to number 17, we have Mario Kart Tours Singapore Speedway. I absolutely love the vibe of this song, and although it is not the best song in the game, obviously we're in the 17th spot for a reason, I feel like this is without a doubt the most hype song in the game. And I feel like that can be cemented in how this was used in the trailer for Wave 4 of the Booster Course Pass. Looking back on the entirety of the DLC, I feel like no wave had nearly as much hype surrounding it leading up to its release when compared to Wave 4, and I feel like part of that is definitely the trailer. Sure, I would say Wave 4 is my favorite wave overall, and I think it does have the best selection of tracks out of all six waves of the DLC. However, I think a lot of the hype for this wave was generated not by the amazing selection of tracks, but by the great trailer for Wave 4, which was fueled by the great music behind it, Singapore Speedway. I recently rewatched every Booster Course Pass trailer, and I have to say, something was just different about the Wave 4 one in the best way possible. And I really do believe that's because the music is so good. The piano, the strings, the synth with all the crazy beat drops, the whole song is just insanely well put together and is just one of the best songs in the game, and honestly, I'd say one of the best songs in Mario Kart history. It's crazy how good the music of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is that there can be six 16 other songs in this one game that are better than this. But I've already talked for way too long on this one song, so let's move on to those other 16.
at number 16, we have Tor Ninja Hideaway. And remember when I was talking about the underground variant of Super Bell Subway and I said there's only one other song in this game in contention for having the best bass line? Well, this is it. The majority of the first portion of the song is just drums, flute, synth, and some crazy ninja vocals, which already sounds sick enough, but then out of nowhere, one of the craziest bass lines in the entire game just drops out of nowhere and carries for the entirety of the rest of the loop. Not to mention those synths that were mentioned previously, they go absolutely crazy at the same time, and it is seriously one of the coolest moments in a Mario Kart song, in my opinion. Moving on to number 15, we have the final course in the entire game, Mario Kart Wii's Rainbow Road. And this song does a perfect job of encapsulating the magic of this course. And it also sounds like the perfect evolution of the original version of this song from the Wii. Seriously, I feel like this is exactly what this song would have sounded like had they decided to record Mario Kart Wii's soundtrack back in 2008 with live instruments. The trumpets and synth blaring the main melody with the strings humming the counter melody quoting Gusty Garden Galaxy. Seriously, this song overall is just put together so, so well. At number 14, we have Hyrule Circuit. The combination of trumpet and electric guitar works so, so well here. And once again, Takashi Mazazaki is killing it on electric guitar, but also this time on the backing acoustic guitar as well. And these arrangements of the original Legend of Zelda theme and Zelda's Lullaby have to be some of my favorites that Nintendo has produced. And although I've already mentioned this once, I have to mention once again that the instrumentation here is absolutely spot on. It's a perfect combination of the triumphant feeling of Zelda music with the high energy style of Mario Kart music. And then, moving on to number 13, we have Yoshi's Island. Now, at this point, I've talked about how quite a few songs in this soundtrack have big band elements, but this is one of the few times in this soundtrack where they literally brought out the entire big band to record one of the songs. Seriously, this sounds like it was taken right out of the 40s in the best way possible. It almost sounds like a better version of New York Minute. I also love how the song kind of evolves as you listen to it. It starts off with pretty much just the normal Yoshi's Island main motif that you've heard in the Yoshi's Island game from the Super Nintendo, pretty much just playing it as it appeared there except with live instruments. But then after it does that, it does the same thing again and kicks in the rest of the song with a full swing arrangement, which is actually weirdly reminiscent of the 8-bit Big Bands arrangement of this song, which I highly recommend you all go watch if you're a fan of video game jazz. The combination of the main clarinet with the backing trombones and tuba sounds so, so good good, and I really do hope that Nintendo decides to use this remix again in other games. Hopefully it'll maybe even appear in the next Smash game, I feel like it would fit really well there. Now before I say the name of this next one, even though y'all can see it on screen, I'd just like to reiterate that we are ranking the music of these tracks, not the actual courses. And with that out of the way, our number 12 spot is 3DS Toad Circuit. I legitimately think that the 3DS Circuit theme is one of the best circuit themes in the entire Mario Kart series. Something about it is just so funky, I absolutely love the backing organ. Couple that with some funky backing synth and the trumpets blaring the main melody and you have got yourself an amazing Mario Kart tune.
And then, moving on to number 11, we have what is the best Rainbow Road song in the game, N64 Rainbow Road. Now, I mentioned previously that the 8 Deluxe version of the Wii Rainbow Road theme sounded almost like this is what exactly it would sound like had they recorded the original with live instruments. It almost sounded like a fully realized version of the original version of the song. And that's not the case here. Instead, they have gone beyond that and made this so, so much better than the original version, in my opinion. While the original version did have a lot of magic and charm to it, it had almost no energy. I could probably fall asleep to the original version of the N64 Rainbow Road theme. It's not to say it's bad at all, it's just it didn't have nearly enough energy for a race course theme. And this is completely fixed in the 8 Deluxe version of this track. So much energy has been pumped into it and it almost sounds like it's constantly encouraging you to keep going that you can get the first place if you want to just try as hard as you can and i feel like that really does embody the spirit of this rainbow road and even in doing all that i feel like it still does a great job of retaining that whimsical feeling that the original had And we've finally made it down to our top 10. And kicking off this top 10, we have the best battle course theme, in my opinion, 3DS Woohoo Town. Now, full transparency, part of the reason this is so high on this list may or may not be because of my Wii Sports Resort nostalgia. But it doesn't change the fact that I legitimately do think this is one of Nintendo's best arrangements of this song. It's just so upbeat, and I absolutely love the combination of the accordions and the horns. Plus, the backing strings sound absolutely amazing as well. Now, I am honestly not positive, but this song might be made with synth synthesized instruments and not live instruments. If it is in fact synthesized, then the synthesized instruments that they use were extremely high quality because I legitimately can't tell if it's just live instruments with a high amount of processing or if it is synthesized. Overall, it doesn't really impact my enjoyment of the song that much, so I'm not going to count it as points against it. So it's staying here in the top 10. Then at number 9 we have what is in my opinion the best circuit theme in the entire series, GCN Yoshi Circuit. And here they've done something a little bit similar to what they did with DS Shroom Ridge and Mario Circuit, as they've kept some of the synthesized whistles that were in the original circuit theme from Mario Kart Double Dash. And accompanying them is some funky backing electric guitar and synth notes, as well as the amazing duo of the alto and Barry saxophones playing the main melody. Every time I listen to this song, it puts a smile on my face. The original composition of the circuit theme from Double Dash is already so good, but the instrumentation here completely completely puts it over the edge. And then moving up to our number 8 spot, we have the very first song that you'll hear when you boot up the game, the title theme. And this song really does have it all, Takashi Mazazaki and Tepe Kawasaki killing it on bass and guitar. We have some references to the original Super Mario Kart title theme, there's insane backing, berry sax as well as a great alto sax, the horn section is amazing with trumpets and trombones. There's a synth keyboard solo, seriously? This is the perfect embodiment of the entire Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, which is why it's so fitting that this is the first song you'll ever hear when booting up the game.
And then moving up to number 7, we have a song with one of the best sax solos in the game, Mario Kart Tour's Sydney Sprint. And even if you don't play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which I don't know why that would be the case if you're watching this video and you're this far in, but even if that is the case, if you're on Nintendo YouTube really in any form, you'll almost have definitely heard this song. It is used by us Nintendo YouTubers a lot, and there's a good reason. It's simply so, so good. The backing trumpets and vocals sound amazing as well and really tie the song together, but let's be honest, if you're listening to Sydney Sprint, you're listening to it for the amazing sax. Once again, this is one of the best sax solos in the game, and it just puts a smile on my face anytime I hear it. But notice how I said Sydney Sprint has one of the best sax solos in this game, because the actual honor of the best sax solo in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has to go to our number 6 spot, Dolphin Shoal, specifically the above water variant of the song. Kazuki Katsuda only played on two songs in the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, but when he did play, he played hard. Seriously, this is one of the best sax solos I have ever heard, excluding the fact that it's from Mario Kart just in general. And of course, this song is also the home of the famous Mario Kart Lick, which if you didn't know, Katsuda has been playing in many of his songs since back in the 90s, so it did not originate in Mario Kart at all. That's just where it's known from. And then in our number 5 spot, 65 spots over the other version of this song, we have Mario Kart Wii's Moonview Highway City version. Everything about this song is, dare I say, perfect. And yet somehow in this game alone, there are 4 more songs that are better than it. Seriously, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has the best soundtrack of any video game, hands down, sue me, you can never change my mind on this. The combination of soprano sax and xylophone for the main melody sounds so clean, and I absolutely love the sound of the backing trumpets and piano. And the drums, oh don't get me started on the drums. Remember how I said in Mute City that had pretty much the closest thing to a drum solo in the base Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game? Well, the DLC gave us a literal drum solo in this song. I need Nintendo to release the credits for who played the instruments on the DLC tracks for this game because we have no idea who did this insane drum solo, but it sounds so clean. And somehow even better, at number 4, we have GBA Cheeseland. And this song combines so many of the best elements of songs we've already talked about previously. For example, it's got an insane backing Barry Saxon synth, plus an amazing bass line and an incredibly solid beat. The brass section is absolutely insane. And of course, who could forget the sax? I still stand by my opinion that Sydney Sprint and Dolphin Shoals had better sax solos, but this one is definitely up there as well. And how amazing the rest of the song is definitely carries it above those other songs into our fourth place spot.
But what's better than one Mario Kart song, you might ask? A compilation of a bunch of Mario Kart songs arranged so that they fit together perfectly because in our third place spot, we have the Booster Course Pass staff roll. And this is essentially a compilation of songs from the majority of the tour tracks from the Booster Course Pass DLC, and they have improved on so many of them. For example, they made Sky High Sunday actually sound good. Now, I will say that some of the sections of this do sound a little bit disjointed and don't really blend together as well as a lot of the other ones do, but I feel like they are arranged so wonderfully that there is no doubt in my mind that it deserves to be this high on this list. And I've got to say, my absolute favorite portions of this are A, they somehow gave Ninja Hideaway an even better baseline. I didn't even think that was possible, but they did, and B, they pretty much made a full big band version of Singapore Speedway. Just when I thought that song couldn't get any more hype, they proved me wrong. I really need Nintendo to release a full version of this version of the song as well. Seriously, I know they're never gonna do it, but please, Nintendo, release a full version of this song. I need this in my life. But then in second place, our runner up for the best song in the game is the normal staff roll. It's basically pretty much all the same praise that I gave the Booster Course Pass staff roll, except none of it really feels disjointed. Now I'm gonna keep my thoughts on this song relatively brief, just because there's a pretty long portion that I'm going to play after I finish talking about it, and I don't want the section on this song to go on forever. But basically, my favorite part of this entire credits music has to be the Electrodrome section, when it switches from the piano and synth to the full on trumpet it big band section I don't know something about it I just absolutely love and this entire song is arranged so so masterfully everything feels like it fits perfectly together almost like the entire soundtrack was designed to be played in this way and although I'd love to just share the entire song in this video you can look up the entire song if you want to listen to it no I'm just going to share from that electrodrome portion to the end of the credits because it's not that long of a section but it is by far in my opinion the best section of the song it just constantly keeps building until the big finish and it sounds absolutely incredible. But if for some reason you don't feel like listening to all that, here's a timestamp so you can skip to number one.
But what song could be better than these two staff roles of the game? The two songs that aren't confined to a looping structure that are masterfully designed to incorporate the best elements of the rest of the soundtrack. Well, if you know me, you probably know what I put at number one. And even though there are these other songs that are so wonderfully arranged in this game, there's not a single doubt in my mind that this song deserves to be at number one. And before I say what it is, I'm just gonna let the musicians take it away and I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out. And our number one spot is Big Blue. Of course it is. What else would it be? I'm going to tell you that I spent literal months changing around the placements of so many of these songs on this list because the production of this video has taken so, so long. And throughout that entire process, I've been changing it. Pretty much every song on this list has been moved around at least once. But I have to say, there is one song that I knew from the very start would be number one, and that was Big Blue. No other song has ever been in contention throughout the entire process of making this video for our first place spot. This is the other song on the soundtrack that Kazuki Katsuda played on, and he absolutely kills it throughout the entirety of it. And so does Takashi Mazazaki on guitar. And if you didn't know, the reason these two play so incredible incredibly well together as if they already know what the next person's gonna play even during solos and they're able to riff off of it that's because Takashi Mazazaki and Kazuki Katsuda are the two main members of the Japanese jazz fusion band Dimension one of the biggest Japanese jazz fusion bands in the world and if that wasn't insane enough Tepe Kawasaki is back absolutely killing it on the bass again Seriously, every single aspect of this song is so, so incredible, and it is such a joy to listen to throughout. And in my opinion, there is no better song worthy of the title, the greatest song in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. But at the end of the day, these are all just my opinions, so what do you all think? Do you think the organ solo on Toad's Turnpike is great enough to warrant it being in the number one spot? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below, and if you like this video, then please make sure to press the like button. I mean, if you got this far in the video, you probably did like it. I mean, it's a two hour long video. I don't know why you would watch it if you don't like it, but if you did like it, also please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot, and this is by far the biggest project I have ever worked on. I said that at the intro to the video, which I recorded before I actually did the majority of the rest of the video, and I'm recording this after I've done the rest of it it has been months please if you like the video subscribe seriously I need it but with all that out of the way thank you all once again so much for watching I'm Jacob with the game block signing off